Uh, my name is Gary Fowler, and I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of GSD Get You Done Venture Studios. We're an AI quantum venture studio located in Silicon Valley in Florida. We have 143 companies that have come through GSD from 57 countries around the world. We believe that intellectual capacity is evenly spread around the world, but the opportunities are not. Our particular focus is areas like uh, artificial intelligence, generative AI. And I must say that the kind of companies that we have, we have companies from $0 revenue to over $100 million in revenue. We have companies that have come, we have MBAs from places like Stanford University, Harvard, MIT. Uh, we're agnostic as to where they're from. We care about where they're going to go. And with that, I have some, we've already done some of the introductions, but it, they weren't recorded. So I'm going to go down through Victoria. Do I have time to introduce our judges? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love okay. to get to know. So, so well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back through and reintroduce judges because it just it's it's so great to have you here. But the judges, many of them we've we've spent time on panels together. Some of them have co-invested on projects with us. Many of them are friends, uh, uh, and um, and we worked on different deals together. So with that, I'd like to go down through and get started. And uh, and and I had done some introductions before, but I'm going to reintroduce the judges again. Marin, I'm going to start with you. If you could just introduce yourself a little bit about uh, your fund. You're on mute, Marin. Hello, everybody. My name is Marin. I'm Singapore based. I've been building uh, our family office. Uh, uh, we've been developing our 175 year old company from a single operative business to a portfolio of companies um, and i'm happy to be here uh, i know gary from uh, from many panels we've been doing together uh the last couple of years thank you Marin. appreciate it kingsley hello everyone my name is kingsley kobayashi i'm the founder of uh, kobayashi group among other companies i'm a serial entrepreneur and investor and uh, myself and gary has go way back and we've been on different panels, we've been investing on different uh, projects together. And I look forward to listening to everyone today and see how I can uh, collaborate or contribute to your project. Thank you very much. Yeah, and Kingsley's in Tokyo, by the way. Uh, I'm, Brian, I'm in Tokyo right now, yeah. Yes. Hi, Brian Flynn from Diamond Stream Partners. Uh, we invest in uh, aviation mobility and other forms of mobility uh, transformation. Uh, we co-founded the, uh, the largest airline in Mexico, Volaris, uh, along with some other companies. All right, thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Steve Bruno. Steve Bruno, CEO of Calibrex Developments. We're a residential land developer and constructor across North America and also sit on the board of a large automotive family's family office for Astronic International. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Joy. You're, You're on mute, Joy. Sorry about that. Joy Schaffler, CEO of uh, Distinctive Edge Partners, um, communications and marketing firm serving aerospace and defense industries. And I've invested heavily throughout the um, fintech industry, commercial real estate and aerospace and defense. Thanks. Appreciate it, Joy. Michael, flight. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for inviting me again. Uh, Michael, flight. Uh, we've been in uh, the institutional real estate, commercial real estate space, you know, since 1990. Uh, more recently, we started branching out into blockchain real estate uh, and specifically securities uh, on blockchain. Uh, we're also doing things and uh, in, in looking into projects in art, uh, specifically with uh, art rights and royalties on blockchain. And then, uh, you know, we're uh, doing some things in wealth storage uh, and, you know, stable coins and wealth storage coins. And, you know, pleasure to meet uh, everybody here and uh, introduce one of the startups here to Gary. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. All right. Um, let's see who else we have here. Peter Aaron. Hi, my name is Peter Aaron. I'm with Innovation Works. We're Pittsburgh's leading early stage investor. We invest across AI, robotics, and healthcare. Thanks for having me, Gary. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Mark Mueller-Eberstein. 
Glad to be here, Mark Müller-Eberstein, Seattle area, a member of the Alliance of Angels, Swan Fund, um, early stage investor for the last 13 years, strong focus on technology, but also have some other weird things in our portfolio like chocolate and DeLoreans. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Uh, Matthew Awana, Wanless. Hey, Matt Wanless here with LFX Venture Partners. We were formerly the Fung Group, which was the family office of Lane Fung, the world's largest consumer supply chain manager. So we invest in series A to C, everything around retail value chain, the retail value chain tech, supply chain tech. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Josh Haberman. Hey, everyone. Josh Haberman. I'm an investor at Sidekick Partners. We are based in Dallas and New York. I'm in New York. And we are early stage, typically pre-seed to series A, uh, half consumer, half enterprise tech. Thanks. Appreciate it, Josh. Rishab Gupta. Hey, everyone. I'm Rishab. We run a blockchain, a blockchain focused fund and an incubator based out of Dubai since 2015. Been uh, uh, primarily pre seed to st uh, seed stage and then uh, working with their token structures. Thanks, Rishab. Uh, Ronnie Lavi. Hey guys, I'm Ronnie. I'm based in New York. I'm the operating partner at 97212 Ventures. We are a pre-seed and seed stage fund investing in uh, enterprise tech, digital transformation, digital uh, uh, health and wellness and uh, future work. Great. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, Jason Jacobson. Hi, thanks for having me here, Gary. Uh, Jason Jacobson. I'm in the Chicago area. We I run Propellant Ventures, which is a seed stage fund. We invest in B2B tech based in the Midwest. Early seed is our sweet spot. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Juan Arango. Thank you, Gary. Um, I'm Juan Arango. I'm executive director for Credit to Forum, Northwest and Rockies. Credit to Forum is a, is a global angel group, more than uh, 45 chapters all over the world. My region in the Northwest, we put in around $73 million into 106 companies last year. 88% uh, of the companies that came through our process raised capital. We are industry agnostic, but we look for companies that are a little bit into revenue, at least $750,000. That's what we Great. do. Thank Thanks, Juan. Uh, Leon Eisen. Hi, everybody. My name is Leon Eisen. I'm currently in Tel Aviv and I am uh, with Network Vichy that was presented amazingly by Victoria. At the same time, I am a senator at the World Business Angel Investment Forum. This is affiliated investment forum with G20. Thanks, Leon. Appreciate it. Robert Christensen. Uh, Bob Christensen, I'm the founder of Tool Financial Technologies. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, Robert, I'm sorry. I, I, not I, yours, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. not yet. I made Thanks, a mistake. <laughs> so small. Yeah, sorry about that. But I appreciate it. Okay, uh, Buki. Hi, everyone. I'm Buki Adeba Omanu. I'm based in New York. I'm an early stage investor at Anthemis. We are a fintech and embedded finance focused firm. We have been investing in this space now for the last 14, 15 years. We're a global firm. We have office, an office in New York, an office in London, but we invest globally. Um, and we do everything from pre-seed through pre-IPO. I personally spend most of my time at the pre-seed seed and Series A stages. Thank you. Oh, my good friend, Igor Rabinke. Igor, it's good to see you. Hi, Gary. Uh, I'm Igor Abenke, general partner and founder of Altair Capital, early stage uh, pre seed, seed uh, early A, investing uh, in funds since 10 years, early stage, a uh, few unicorns, the cocorns, and sit on board of uh, Miro.com, dealing my early investors, uh, investments, and uh, member board of Open Web and so on. Thanks, Igor. Appreciate it. Uh, Vladimir Botswadze. Hi, Gary. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, my name is Vladimir Botswadze. I'm based in Dubai. I currently serve on the advisory board of the United States Artificial Intelligence Institute. I'm also a mentor at Techstars, and I'm also a, a judge at Webby Awards. I also share my insights with uh, startups and entrepreneurs at uh, Abu Dhabi SME Hub. Thanks, Vladimir. Appreciate it. How 
Hi everyone, my name is Hauke. Like, how can you do that? Sorry for the spelling, it's Northern German. I'm calling in yeah. from Germany. I am the uh, founding partner of AI.Fund and the managing director of Lakeside Invest. Uh, as AI.Fund, we are a specialized uh, AI fund in early stage applied AI, mostly Europe and Israel. Um, in Lakeside is a general tech investor with about uh, 30 investments. I have been an ex-member of the European leadership team of Amazon and an ex-member uh, of the board of management of uh, Vista Principles. Glad to be with you tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, David Aponi. Hey, everybody. My name is David, and I'm an investor at Foreign Ventures. I'm calling from Toronto. We have offices in New York, San Francisco, and Toronto. Our focus is generally anything early stage B2B software. So what that means is basically before your um, Series A, so your pre-seed and seed. Thanks for having us. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, David. Did I miss anybody? Gary, you I missed me. I made Ryan. Ah, Adrian. Okay, there you are. Sorry about that, Adrian. No worries. <laughs> I can't believe the be the best is last. Uh, how about that? <laughs> Thank you, Gary, for the invitation. We are uh, among friends here, so uh, we don't have to formalize. Hello, everybody. I'm Adrian Niculescu. I'm a Romanian uh, uh, serial entrepreneur and investor based in uh, Dubai. I represent here Tomorrowworks Capital which is uh, focused but not limited to Web3 investments. And our secret sauce is that we uh, back especially founders who are parents with children so we can share our um, pains of juggling between work and uh, uh, time with kids, among other things. I'm very happy to contribute to this uh, very valuable event and uh, can wait to to see the pitches. Thank you very much. All right, we have one more. Jose, I don't see you here, but I, I just got a note. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you, Gary. Uh, um, no, uh, it's a real pleasure to be among uh, this uh, excellent uh, panel here today. Uh, my name is Jose Grasa. Um, I've been uh, for three decades, uh, more or less, an investor in diverse areas besides being an entrepreneur at the same time on the sideline. Um, um, typically, I invest in tech, but um, I'm also open to invest in other areas and completely agnostic to the uh, geography. Thank Thanks, you, Jose. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming today. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you coming today and spending your time with these incredible companies. Uh, Victoria? Yes, absolutely. Glad to meet everyone. If anyone comes by Silicon Valley at some point, please let us know. Uh, we'd love to host you at one of our in-person events where you can also hang out with Gary. So that's on the table. And now with that, allow me to proceed. So all of the judges have received a link for me today. It's the voting link, or more like yesterday. It's the voting link. and you're going to be using it to rank this. So what you need to do is just click on the link and you're going to be taken to this amazing page. So you're going to see logos of the startups and you can rate them. And we generally suggest that you rate them either on the investment potential from the standpoint of your background or on the potential to become a unicorn. Generally, that's why we have a diverse judging panel. So you can provide different um, points of view. And you don't need to click submit or anything. You will uh, be able to um, vote for startups while they're pitching. But generally, I will also give you two minutes or um, one, two minutes after all the startups have finished pitching so you can finalize your vote. And then we're going to have a winner announcement. So here are some here are the startups presented today. They're going to be pitching in this order, in the same order as in our website. And one thing that I'd like to remind the startups of is that you have three minutes for pitching and three minutes for the Q&A with judges. So the Q&A is first come, first serve. And I'm going to be moderating the Q&A. So judges, once you have a question, just please raise your hand. And I'll try my best to follow the order. Besides that, once um, this happens, that the judges have understood everything they wanted to understand from the pitch perfectly, and they don't 
uh, want to ask um, any more very specific questions, then we have quite a few members of the audience, investors, who might want to ask the questions in case we still have time. But besides that, uh, there is also an option of the Q&A. So members of the audience and judges, if you'd like to ask startups any specific questions after the Q&A, you can write them in the Q&A section and our startups will be glad to respond. With that, here's the agenda that we already uh, have gone through in terms of the jury performance, startup pitch sessions, and then we have um, a bit of time for networking, just checking in and thinking out. And now, startups, I'm going to be timing you very precisely. So I suggest that if you can time yourself as well, I know you've prepared extensively. If you can time yourself, um, try to finish the pitch in under three minutes. And I'm going to remind you when you have 30 seconds left, just out of respect for everyone's time. And we're going to be very um, mindful of um, everyone's contributions. And with that, allow me to stop sharing the screen and introduce to you ZHub AI. So please share your screen and introduce yourself. And once you do that, once you're ready, we, you, you're going to have training. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. All right. Can you make it full screen? Mm-hmm. All right, and you have, um, I'm not sure if you're muted or not, but you have three minutes and counting. Give me a sec. You can hear me, uh, guys. You can hear me well? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, all. I am Shekhar, and at ZHub, we are reshaping the future of industrial workforce. Both I and my co-founder, Nilesh, have past experience in blue-collar industry. And what we have realized is that the industry is terribly underutilizing its workforce, and it's leading to an annual loss of more than $100 billion. The industry is trying to fix it via overhiring, but that's obviously not working because there are not enough people to hire. The top reason of underutilizations are lack of information flow, lack of skill development opportunities, and complex and manual processes. And the stakeholders don't even know what the ROI on their workforce are. So to address this problem, ZHub is reimagining workforce management with the help of AI. Our vision is to maximize workforce productivity and reduce churn by simplifying collaboration and information access for workers, making training content creation easy and accessible, and giving an insight to business owners on their productivity status and recommendations to enhance it. We also have a mobile app for workers to provide uh, easy digital access to important informations like shift, paste up training, and an AI chatbot to access knowledge database. This is an overview of our product. On the left, we have a productivity dashboard. We combine data with various other sources like MES, uh, timesheet, inventory management to create productivity bird eye view for stakeholders. Uh, in the center, we have a training dashboard we can create any training contents from a one pager Google Doc and convert into an engaging uh, video. On the right, we have an AI chatbot for employees who have easy access to information they need to do their jobs. We can feed any policy, any user manual or information to the bot to, uh, to personalize the conversation. It's a massive opportunity. Our, uh, even if I look at my our ideal customer profile, which is logistic manufacturing and supply chain, it's coming out to be a $6 billion industry. We have an experienced team. Uh, both I and Nilesh have built a billion dollar product for companies like Meta, eBay, and Intuit. And we also have industry experts to advise on, us on various fronts. We have a B2B model for three prime offering, business space, business, and enterprise career. Our user acquisition uh, focuses on organic direct sale, digital marketing, and growing. we have a growing focus on product-led uh, product growth and rappers. We have made a good progress since the launching of our platform MVP in September this year. Currently, we have five active customers and 20 customers are onboarding right now, ensuring a committed revenue of 10K MRR by Q1. We are raising a safe round. And with this once, we will accelerate our product dev and speed up our customer's acquisition to hit a goal of 100K MRR in 12 months. Thank you. Great, amazing, perfectly on time. 
Um, as we discussed before, there's a thin line between uh, talking about the rant you're raising. Um, so make sure to, I feel like, maybe not indicate this verbally, as long as you just have it on your slide. I think that's perfectly understandable. And very often judges would like to scroll back to some of the uh, potential slides that they'd like to discuss. And with that, I'm going to open the floor to our judges. And Igor, please go ahead. Okay. Um, my question is that I didn't understand uh, what is the uh, idea. Uh, what is really your product? Uh, so currently, the blue collar industry has a lot of inefficiencies. We are creating a work score management system to attack those inefficiency and bring productivity back to the company. No, this is, this is clear. But what exactly? Whom you sell? You sell to HR? You sell to 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 whom? To blue collar uh, worker itself? Who, who's your buyer? I didn't understand what is the product. I understand that it's a lot of ineffective in inefficiencies, and you solve them all. But I didn't understand what's the product, and uh, if I want to buy, what to buy? Uh, sorry, I didn't misunderstood your question. So we are selling it to HR and the stakeholders. And they can give it uh, the solution to their employees if they like. Got it. All right, amazing. So, Rishab, please go ahead with your question. So, uh, Shekhar, how do you plan to on board these uh, the blue collar force? Because the biggest challenge that you know such platforms have faced, in my experience, is awareness and onboarding, which you know becomes the data points for the. Uh, people that you're selling to, so basically your uh, employers. So how do you plan to onboard them? How do you plan to make them aware of using the chatbots? So essentially, what's your GDM? Nilesh, do you want to take it? Yeah, sure. So our uh, customers are B2B businesses, right? So not directly individuals. Uh, so we are selling it to the businesses and our GTM there is uh, direct sales, digital marketing. And we are grow our growing focus is on the product led growth and referrals. All right. So employers are responsible and, and they are they are working with their employees to uh, to get them onboarded on the on, on our product. Does that does that answer your question? Uh no, but okay. I'll, I'll we can uh, we can take it offline. Maybe I can take it up offline. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh we have time for one more question for Jason and one, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, I traveled extensively. I'm not always sure what language um, I should be speaking. Um, yeah, so, oh, please oh, sorry. go ahead. Yeah, so my question's a little bit along those lines, but um, I, I think part of the challenge is we don't understand who, who you're, what type of blue collar companies or workers you're selling to. Seem like you're very wide and not narrowly focused. So. That's my under, That's what I would like to know is who you actually starting with. Uh, you didn't really go into any kind of detail. Uh, so that's my question. Thank you. So our ICP is manufacturing supply chain and logistic businesses uh, who are in uh, small and medium sized enterprises to mid market around 300 employees to 5,000 employees range. And our uh, persona whom we are selling this product to is the head of HR, head of operations. Right, so they are the our consumer within the organization. All right, amazing. So, um, if anyone has any questions, Sarah, feel free to write them in the Q and A, and Zihab will happily answer. And with that, let me introduce Creators AI. So, please share your screen, and once you're ready, you're gonna have three minutes to pitch. All right, okay. can you do it full screen? Um, is not. Um, I think it's um bottom right corner also. Hmm. Of the um, on the video right maybe, there. on the video player. Uh -huh. On the bottom right. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah, it's full screen now. All right, great. Okay, so we have three minutes and counting. Okay. Let me take you back to time when AI was just a tool, a time when we were using ChatGPT to help us with writing or answer our questions. 
It wasn't long ago, but the innovation is moving so fast that you can easily stay behind. Now, let me tell you, gone are the days when AI was just a tool. The line between human and artificial intelligence is blurring in the corporate world. Take, for example, the famous rum company, Dictador. They've appointed an AI as their CEO. This is far from Hollywood script. It's a bold reality. Hi, my name is Marco, and I'm a co-founder at Creators. For small to medium businesses seeking to optimize resourcing costs and boost productivity, Creators provides a subscription-based AI-native workspace and autonomous team members. For enterprises, we offer custom-tailored solutions. With the amount of personal investment, we have successfully developed a multimodal framework for autonomous large language models. Designed for an average Joe, AI is seamlessly integrated in the tools we already use in our daily lives, be it Canva, Notion, Airtable, Zapier, or else you will find an AI-powered alternative at Creators. We have given AI the ability to see, hear, type, click, and speak. In other words, if you give it access to your company data, you basically get your own private Google that can work autonomously. Imagine what would happen if top AI models like GPT, Llama, Claude, Mistral, and others would communicate between each other and work autonomously together. Well, we've done just that. By combining them, we enhance accuracy, prevent bias, save time with prompting, and reduce cost. Our AI Copilot goes even further. It can see on the screen what you are currently working on and offer help or even take action inside your app. And that's just the beginning. Our vision is to offer a new generation of digital co-workers by positioning AI as the loyal shadow walking beside every individual. There will never be more perfect timing for our solution. Together, we can reshape the business landscape as we know it. Thank you. Right. Um, okay, that's really good. And now let me open the floor to questions. Mark, please go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Marco. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, question: uh, Microsoft announced for their customers, the auto enterprise customers, the autopilot that really that goes basically provides ChatGPT four uh, capability across all the different Microsoft products plus other data storage. How is your product different? So what we did is we basically combined uh, top AI models. So it's a GPT-4, it's a Llama, it's you know all of the uh, top models where ChatGPT-4 uh, is currently the best AI model in general, but it's also the, uh, the most expensive and it's not the best over the, all the areas, right? So, for example, um, Llama is uh, much more capable in research. Um, Claude is much uh, better in coding uh, and similar, right? So we have combined those models that can work between each other autonomously. Imagine uh, that as, as a WhatsApp group, uh, group chat uh, of a company team, but in that group, AI models are team members. And you basically, uh, you are part of the group, you give a prompt, which is uh, which is in essence uh, a task, and watch them how they collaborate between each other. Where uh, ChatGPT or GPT-4 32K acts as a, as a manager and calls, invites other AI models to the chat uh, and gives them tasks where they are uh, better. For example, thank you. One aspect. Yeah. All right, amazing. So, my Ma Ma Myron, please go ahead. Uh, Marco, thank you. So what would need to happen for this to fail in a year from now? Um, that's a very, very good uh, question. So while other, while startups bring innovation, we are not afraid of the startups. Our primary, primary concern is uh, major tech companies would start offering something similar and they would take um, essentially clients for us. All right, great. So Igor, please go ahead. 
Yeah. Uh, Marco, uh, question. You speak about uh, digital employee, but uh, in reality, you show capabilities of copilot. What is really difference between uh, different copilots? Because, okay, a lot of uh, solutions also offer uh, access to multiple LLMs. Uh, so what, what is uh, in reality difference in your offering? Um, so what is different? Um, we we are not offering only a multi-agent LLM. So uh, we created an entire work uh, work uh, space, right? Uh, we have um, unique algorithms that uh, that learns when user is doing something. So they can see what user is doing and learn from it, right? And then they can learn from the documents that you upload uh, to that. So you can basically customize them uh, completely. Um, while combining those AI models, as Mark, I mentioned, Mark, I'm, Mark, yeah. I'm sorry, you don't yeah. answer. You are not answering my question. You answer you okay. speak something else. My question okay. is uh, not how LLM or set of LLMs work. My question is: you claim that you bring digital employee and you started with metaphor of digital CEO. So my question is, what is in reality in your offering, which does it uh, really employee of a company, no, 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 not a tool or copilot? Yeah, uh, basically they work, out, they can work autonomously, fully autonomously, right? So employee, for example, uh, you as a boss, you would give a uh, an order or a task to that employee, and that employee would execute that task um, completely autonomously. Uh, you already have uh, okay working uh, software or working prototype for it. Yes, we have a beta platform. Okay, I'll bring it offline. Okay. Okay. Awesome. That's about what we have time for. Um, but Brian, Juan, if you can type your questions in the q and I think that would be highly, highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, all right. And let me pass the mic to Phil True. So please share your screen. And once you're ready. All right. All right. Can you see it? Yes, absolutely. So go on. All right. Perfect. So let me ask you guys. How many of you spend time on social media every day? And also, have you ever made any money from that time? Unless you're an influencer and you have a lot of followers, the answer is probably no. And like you, there are 5 billion people who have the exact same issue because there's no way to monetize activity on social media unless you're an influencer. Guys, it's great to be here. My name is Max, and I'm the CEO and founder of Filtru, the first loyalty platform for social media users, where everybody, and I mean everybody, can turn their daily activity on TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat into benefits. Just link your social account to Filtru, and every time you comment, you like, or you post on these platforms, you earn points on Filtru which you can use to claim rewards like gift cards, discounts, and coupons. We also, of course, offer this for the B2B side. So banks, credit card companies, and fintechs can also benefit from our rewards marketplace and data. And in exchange, they provide us with financial benefits for our users. Now picture this. You can earn a debit card from MasterCard with money on it just because you use TikTok this week. That's a game changer. So far, We've had 4 million people who use our MVP. We offer rewards from 10,000 brands and we can operate in 185 countries. Our business model is super simple. We make money when users spend their points on our platform and also when they subscribe to Filtru Premium, which we have an incredible 93% conversion rate to this paid plan and we just launched. Of course, we also make uh, money when businesses buy points from our platform. But the best part is here. We can actually work with our competitors. We turn competitors into partners because we're a multi-platform and we empower every single one of them. 
We're actually working with two of them on this list, Skippers and Rakuten. So behind this great idea, we have an amazing team. Both Rodrigo and I have worked together for the past four years. We've all co-founded startups in the past, but more importantly, we're being advised by gurus like Manuel Marin, who co-founded Wallbox Chargers, a three billion unicorn, and Paulo Villa, MasterCard's innovation vice president. And he's the one spearheading our fintech side. So guys, right now we're closing our pre-seed round and we'd love for you guys to reach out and to help us democratize uh, opportunities for everybody on social media. Thank you very much. All right, amazing. I feel like we're pushing the restrictions on the streams in China. Uh, but yeah, let's be very careful with that. So let's open the floor to the Q&A and Juan, uh, please go ahead with your question. Uh, thank you so much. So what are your current sales and what's uh, and, and your direct to consumer, right? Yes. So right away, our B2C side is direct to consumer. We're just launching now. So the MVP was a really basic version of the app. And uh, with the MVP, with Tessis, we've done only like for 14K in, in revenue. We're actually going to start monetizing now. Okay. We're currently launching in, in, in Indonesia, by the way. Max, I have one question. What, what have you been doing in terms of branding? I mean, uh, how many content uh, do you create right? per, per week, per day? Uh, what channels do you focus on and uh, how are you, how have you been trying to reach your target audience, you know? Yeah, perfect. So right now we're working with TikTok. So this is the first platform we're working with. We have a uh, content creators that post on a daily, on a daily and weekly basis. Um, and our goal to market strategy, basically we work already with a lot of influencers and brand ambassadors. We actually have more than 500 brand ambassadors uh, working with us. And our strategy is a mix of uh, organic and paid, of course, right? So we have brand ambassadors, influencers, content creators. We always have the kind of the filter watermark on everything we post. And, um, and of course, paid uh, paid advertising. To boost yeah, but price. you know, I mean, uh, so many consumers are very skeptical of ads because more than 750 million consumers have ad blockers on mobile devices, you know? So every time I, I work with startups, they complain that they are wasting their money because nobody sees and believes those ads because advertising first steals our time. So consumers are very skeptical of, of ads because they expect something different from startups, you know? So the best thing is to uh, position your startup as a media company and to inform, enlighten, and uh, entertain uh, consumers, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we also have a big referral program in place, which I forgot to mention. But our like our main focus right now, it's it's mostly uh, organic. Awesome. So, Maxim, um, uh, I have a question. Uh, so, you said 4 million users with 14,000 in revenue and 93% conversion rate. Is that the right numbers? Yeah, so the 4 million MVP users we had is basically, the, our MVP consists on uh, creating content on TikTok at the very beginning, especially uh, augmented reality filters or effects. That was like how the MVP worked, right? So in order for somebody to earn points, they had to use these AR effects on TikTok. And we had 4 million people use these AR effects on the TikTok platform, okay? okay. Now, okay, okay. The version that we just launched now, it's the full, like the first version, like 1.0, if you want, of the application, where the premium version is available. And we've, uh, we just recently, last week, actually launched an onboarding sequence where in less than one minute, all users can experience the aha moment, right? Or the, the climax if you're of the user experience. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I, I got my answer. I have a, a follow-up quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the subscription fee? The subscription fee for the Indonesian market right now, it's $1.90. $1.90 per month. Yeah, correct. And how much are you raising in total in the pre seed oh, No, 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 no. Don't, don't say, say that. Don't okay, say that. Say we that. can't okay. say that. We, we, can, we can take it offline. No worries. Okay. All right. Amazing. All right. Okay. And so, Marin, please go ahead. I think you're muted. Uh, okay. Yeah, Max, thank you. Uh, what if you are forced to stop building filter? Sorry. What if you are stopped to stopped building filter? You personally. Uh, what what made me start building filter? No. Uh, what happens if you are forced to stop building your startup? 
uh, can I ask why would we be forced to to stop building the the startup? Uh, what, no, that's not my question. You know, it's it, what 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 would happen if that scenario would come uh, come into play? We would and you what? cannot continue working for filter for whatever reason. You know, we would pivot somehow. We would pivot. We've already done it since we started. We've done it two times, and I think every problem is an opportunity. So we'd find a way to still work on it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Amazing. That's that's part of what we have time for us. But Peter and Kingsley, please put your questions in the Q and A section. Um, I think uh, the startup would love to answer it. And now allow me to pass the mic to use me. And once you share your screen and you're ready, you have three minutes. Hi, my name is uh, PG. I'm a founder and CEO of UseMe. We have a proven business model with $50 million gross revenue, and we provide fast legal payments for remote work. We connect freelancers from low-cost regions like Eastern Europe, Latin, and Africa with the uh, countries where the money comes from, which are the United States and Western Europe. Because of uh, COVID and AI revolution, Freelance market uh, is growing rapidly, but there are still some pain points that remain unsolved. And these are the bureaucracy of solo business, the cost and long time of swift international payments, and the cost of third parties. Also, from the perspective of the clients, hiring freelancers is, compl freelancer is complicated due to compliance, waste of time, and um, also at the end of the day, the quality of work could be poor. So use me solves those problems and uh, we provide a simple platform to get paid by freelancers and uh, ensure quality for the for the clients. More than 80% of contracts signed by use me are paid out within 24 hours and that's from filling out two minutes form to money on freelancers account. We also developed pretty low cost and effective acquisition model and we uh, focus entirely on acquiring freelancers, let them invite the clients to the networks, to our network, and that's why that way we sign uh, corporations. So, for example, we signed more than 500 companies from the US without spending a dollar there. Nobody wants to hire a new graphic designer for every gig, right? So, in opposition to traditional marketplaces, we allow uh, freelancers to invite the clients from other networks, from offlines, and uh, uh, because of the uh, AI-powered background checking, we are much faster than leading employer of records at the cost of uh, fintech payments like PayPal. We grew 90%, we are breaking even every year, we grew 90% year to year while being bootstrapped. If we uh, get any external funding, we can triple that metrics. We expect to be unicorn in the next few years. Thank you for your time. Looking forward for your questions. If you want to have a full pitch deck, contact me directly. All right, amazing. I'm actually going to share the pitch decks and everyone's uh, contacts with the judges, so judges will be able to reach out. And Leon, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, very interesting. What kind of vehicle are you using for go-to-market strategy? Okay, so we have a freemium marketplace and we attract, uh, we put a lot of content. So we attract freelancers and uh, then we invite them to, uh, we allow them to invite the clients and that way we sign corporations. So we don't focus at all on the employers. We just focus on the freelancers and let them invite the clients. So they are like your ambassadors and how, how it works, how all networking happens. Okay, 60% of our visitors are organic users, thanks to our marketplace and SEO reasons. Uh, we put, put a lot of uh, content and uh, that way we attract freelancers. We also use paid campaigns on social network, networks. Thank you. Right, amazing. Um, Marin, please go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering what is your ultimate financial objective down the road? Uh, Okay, we have a North Star, but uh, I mean, our North Star is like uh, how much commission we make uh, from the contracts 
the, pay, the payouts are within 24 hours. So our main focus is to like the to make it as fast as possible. And that's uh, how, what we concern on. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, um, Brian, please go ahead with a question. And so how are you using the capital? How do you plan to use the capital that you're raising? And also uh, what percentage of the, the transaction fee are, are you taking or is it fixed dollar fee? Okay, right now we take uh, close to 6% of our commission, but then uh, we are moving in our strategy to pay pay per seat from the client side. We know that we can grow our margin from that side because from the client's perspective, our commission is not the issue. The whole cost of the freelancer is what they really care about. So we connect low cost regions with uh, freelancers from the, I mean, with clients from, from those uh, like USA and Western Europe, as I said. And use of funds? Uh, we were focused on Europe for the past uh, last years. We right now next year in the first quarter we're moving to Latin, and then we know that the next big market will be Africa. So we we, we need some funds to to fuel our marketing engine. Okay. Amazing. So Igor, please go for the question. Okay, uh, looks amazing for Bootstrap uh, project. But uh, what I really didn't uh, understand, uh, because you have like two position in, uh, and two comp competition, uh, marketplaces for freelancers and employ employee of records. Could you tell me what is exactly your position in, or it is some uh, something in between? We are actually agent of a record, so we are work like Airbnb, sending gross amount to freelancers account to let them account it. You know, based on the local law reg local law regulations. So we can scale really rapidly in every market in the world. And like, as I said, we people are using traditional marketplaces to find clients. We do have a marketplace, but we have it mainly for marketing reasons to attract freelancers. So we are not monetizing our uh, marketplace. We are using it for marketing reasons then to, to tell freelancers what's our core business. And usually uh, it is like your businesses are your clients. But do they employ like for one time job or for occasion? Yeah, we or, yeah uh, we are like uh, focused on one one of jobs. You know, like the most of the uh, freelancers are graphic designers, copywriters, you know, local local developers. That's what we are experts of, and like we uh, we like focus on ninety three percent of our clients come from other networks, from referrals, from offline. And only 5% of jobs come from our marketplace. But so we attract, you can start to find a client on Upwork and then bring it to use me. It's much cheaper and faster. I got it. Okay. Um, that's about what we have time for. Um, but Brian and Kingsley, if you could put your questions in the QA, um, I'm sure the startup would love to answer them. So next, let me pass the mic to two of financial technologies. Please share your screen. And once you're ready, Mm -hmm. And uh, slideshow. I think it's on top. Okay, good. So three minutes and count, please. Good day. Uh, my name is Bob Christensen, and I am the founder of Tua Financial Technologies. Of the many businesses I have created, Tua holds the greatest potential to substantially benefit shareholders while positively impacting our culture. This model and potential enabled us to attract a seasoned CEO, Frank Monaco, who built an international payments network of over 400,000 merchants generating revenue of $8 billion. Together, we lead to it. It's hard to fathom, but every year, US consumers reach into their pockets, exclusive of insurance and health plans, and spend close to $400 billion for essential services. 39% or 129 million Americans struggle to pay for these necessary services because of high cost or administrative inefficiencies. Introducing the Tua Pay solution. It is 30% more affordable than a credit card, friendly, fully transparent, and can be applied for in two minutes. This is a regulator's dream product. At Tua, we work with the merchant and the consumer. A merchant can offer the product by calling up the application tracker and texting the link directly to their client. The consumer accesses the application window via a merchant link or by scanning a QR code at the location or even by clicking a link at the merchant's website. 
And here's just a few screenshots of the application process. And I say it's less than two minutes to uh, ap apply and be approved. TUA applies a merchant discount fee and collects interest on every loan. The $280 revenue represented on this slide is based on our average loan value of $1,900. We have included December's performance through to the 9th. How do we grow? TUA has signed 11 channel partnerships with key partners, including Global Payments and Dealer Track. These partnerships provide access to large pools of merchants, over 75,000 of them currently, helping us scale while controlling costs. Further, the partnerships create a moat around substantial groups of merchants. Tour currently has 275 merchants live with another, and will be live with 425 in early January. Our channel partnerships will accelerate the pace of merchant growth in 2024 and beyond. Oops, did I go? I think we went the wrong way, sorry. There, oh, there we go. No, sorry, guys. Um, lending traction. Tua has a uh, partnership with community banks across the United States to provide our lending capital. And we're now growing at 25% month over month growth in our lending book. Uh, competi competition. Uh, we only apply in the service industries, not the retail. And uh, we only go to the uh, essential service factors and we're the most affordable uh, option in the marketplace. Merchants drive revenue through quantity and loan activity. These two combined drive income. Merchant inactive rate is the number of merchants which provide one transaction per month by total merchants. Our current merchant active rate is 38% and our target is 75%. Increasing merchants, our active rate impacts revenue. Increasing both accelerates income dramatically. So we're seeking growth capital and- No, 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 no. careful, careful, careful. Okay. Okay. And we're looking Good. for partners to have discussions and uh, questions, please. All right, amazing. So I'm going to open the floor to the Q&A. So judges, please go ahead with questions. All right, Igor. Tim, uh, could you please uh, tell me uh, what are your main uh, verticals? Main verticals are dental, audiology, vision care, veterinarian, and auto service. Yeah, and you put your in uh, competition quadrant as a uh, most affordable. Uh, why? Why could you tell why you are more affordable than your competition? Than Squire, Sandit, and so on. Well, the, the most people pay either through one of the competitors in the marketplace, who usually charge a product uh, um, a an interest rate that's close to a credit card. Um, because of our partnership with community banks, we're able to provide a loan product that comes in on average 30% less than the interest on the, carry car the credit card that's carried by most, most Americans. So that's why we're the most affordable. It's our, it's our partnership with our lending partners. So uh, your competitive uh, advantage is uh, cheaper money, yeah? Cheaper money and better uh, user application process. So uh, a lot of people, it's two minutes to apply. Some of our competitors, you have to take days and apply for a product and wait to hear back from them. Ours is basically a two minute process. Understand, okay. All right, uh, yeah. Marin, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, uh, Robert, thanks a lot, nice pitch. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, uh, why should I care? Or if you prefer, I have another question for you. What simple sentence should i remember tomorrow morning uh, when i talk to my ic so why should i care is yeah, the, why the, should the i care here? yeah why should i care yeah well i believe that the the majority of americans right now like there's over 40 percent that are living paycheck to paycheck and are postponing uh essential services and I believe for the health of our, our nation and our culture and the world at, at general, we want to make sure people have access to life's essentials because that creates a stable country, it's a, stable, a stable environment. So that's why you should care. And uh, the, I think that the thing that you should um, talk to your uh, IC about is, is that a solution does exist that provides uh, a very a very simple solution exists that provides reasonable capital to people so that they can access life's essentials. And that's a solution that should be endorsed. Yeah, thanks a lot, thanks. You're welcome. Great. 
And we have time for the last question from Michael. Michael, please go ahead. So you're, um, do, you, do you pool the loans and then distribute them through your community bank partners or is it distributed on a geographic region? No, we pool them. Uh, the banks are located right across the United States. Uh, it's a, it's, um, and they've invested into an SPV, special purpose vehicle that we've incorporated. The terms of the SPV have sort of, you know, the credit matrix, the maximum loans, the terms of the loans, and we're standing up other SPVs to, to accommodate different groups. But what we do is we season the loan at our bank partner. And then the, after the third day of seasoning, they're sold right into the SPV and the, the capital comes out. Is there an eventual plan to securitize those loans then as well? Yes. Yes. Once we get to the, that critical mass securitization is definitely uh, in, in the plans. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So that's time. Um, but reach up if you could put your question in the Q and A, um, that would be amazing. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now let me pass the mic to Immerse. So you know the drill, share screen. And once you're ready, the countdown starts. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Um, I feel like transcript is amazing, but if you could um, put it full screen. Give me one second. Wait, right. this presentation view. How's this? Um, Can you see full screen presentation not, view? No, still not quite. Uh, try pressing your slideshow in the top left corner. Apologies. No, no worries. You have a moment to figure it out. Mm -hmm. While you're thinking about it, would you like me to maybe pass the mic to another startup so you can uh, spend a moment testing what works best? That works, thank you. Of course. Um, so, Rande, uh, would you like to present next? Sure thing. All right, amazing. Okay, Happy so Wednesday, minutes. everyone. Imagine a world where every business is always available. I'm Sanjay, founder of Rande. We provide AI agents for business. Our no-code platform converts 12 times better than a landing page. It works over instant messages like WhatsApp, as well as web and even supports video avatars like Alice here. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Alice. My name stands for Artificial Language Integrated Client Experience. Rende builds always available AI agents and avatars just like me for sales and service teams. We are a passionate team of successful serial entrepreneurs with multiple exits on a mission to eliminate the friction of booking business. This is my seventh company and my co-founder Gary has 17 under his belt. There are no longer enough workers for front desk and call center jobs and the demographics are only getting worse. Rundy's agents will fill millions of these vacancies. These shortages combined with the expectation of 24 seven service is causing a lot of lost sales. Our CFO needed his phone battery replaced and reached out to Best Buy. After waiting 45 minutes, he went to a competitor that bothered to respond. I'm sure some of you can relate to this. HubSpot indicates that 50% of sales now go to the <clears> first <throat> to respond, and that's where Runde comes in. We automate the sales funnel with generative AI and charge 500 a month subscription plus sales commissions. This is Jackie, an executive and celebrity matchmaker. Now she's a real person, not an avatar. She was recently featured in Forbes magazine and needed scale quickly. In a few days, Runday deployed an AI agent over WhatsApp that answered questions and now onboards numerous clients for her every day. Runday's key difference is that it uses existing content instead of complex decision trees to create brand aware agents in minutes. The competitive products like Drift and Intercom 
take months to do the same. We have multiple patents focused on AI agents and booking high value appointments using dynamic information like schedules, inventory, and personalized account data. We actually filed these two days before ChatGP was released. We have over 30,000 signups and over 100 enterprise pilots, including Fortune 50 organizations like Procter & Gamble, as well as Ford. With 50,000 recurring revenue after only a few months in the market, a market that's expanding to over 100 billion by 2030. We have a dozen integrations today, but need many more to deliver on the promise of rapid customer success. With product market fit now realized for certain verticals, we're raising capital to focus and scale from a handful of pilots every week to thousands. Contact me at Sanjay at Runda.ai and join the mission of creating a world where every business is always available. Great. Um, amazing. So let me open the floor for questions. And Jason, I believe you were the first. Um, well, yeah, thanks for that presentation. What is, where are you starting with your target audience? I mean, what type of retailer is this on, all online or what? You know, I'm just wondering where you're starting. Yeah, we're focused on high growth industries. Um, elective medical is a big one. Any kind of solution that requires either a, a consultation or some kind of uh, you know recommendation. And so, uh, for example, we just launched Femar, which is a, a, a hormone free menopause solution. So the founder has written a couple books. There's a lot of information, but no one no one has time to read anymore, right? So people can log onto their site, ask questions about hey. If you're going through menopause and having sleep issues, they can recommend certain products that they offer. While in addition to creating Zoom appointments with their nutritionist team, as well as collecting payments. So it really, it's automating many aspects of the sales funnel to help scale a business. Okay, thanks. All right, Philip. Thank you. Um, great presentation. I just wanted a little bit more context around your IP and what that will hopefully protect once, the, once they're sort of filed and approved. Yeah, so they're already filed. Uh, they It's really around the uh, couple things. So the first patent was uh, more of a scheduling calendar calculus patent. So we say you send a text, single text message saying, I missed my flight, I need to reschedule my surgery. Our AI engine can understand that, understand, you know, there's doctors, there's locations, there's nurses, there's insurance, there's all kinds of variables involved in the calendar calculus of when that surgery can be rescheduled for. And we can do that in, in a matter of seconds as part of a conversational experience. The second patent is really on the AI agents and how they orchestrate access to multiple systems. So if you have ads on Meta, you're um, going, you know, having conversations through WhatsApp, you're creating Zoom, you're sending those invites over Google Calendar, uh, you're collecting payments through Stripe, all that kind of orchestration, uh, and potentially there's a video avatar that's just talking to someone as a, as a user interface. We we patented this idea, you know, before Chat, Chat GPT came out, and people, you know, even were recently starting to talk about an agent versus a chatbot is something that you know, chatbot talks to you. It's a copilot, right? An agent is something that can actually get work done, executing things across multiple APIs and systems. That's super exciting. Thank you. All right. I'm fairly certain Hawk was next, so please go ahead. Hi. Uh, I was uh, wondering how <clears throat> one day we'll work together with a new European uh, regulation that's coming up. I'm not sure you're aware, but the European Union has recently released a um, new set of rules yeah, to be applied to AI, and they would require, I think, your company to be judged in terms of how critical AI is, yeah, which I think probably not so critical, yeah, but they would also require you, I think, to um, make sure that people get a notion that this that they're speaking with an AI agent. Um, yeah, absolutely. Have you into that, and what do you think about it? Yeah, absolutely. So our, you know, our system, you know, what, what happens usually is people at first don't don't quite realize they're talking to an AI, but they sort of figure it out. But, but then they're kind of in the process. We also are highly compliant in terms of security. Um, so GDPR, uh, the California regulation and the new ones, we don't store any data. We have a, a nano services edge network that we use transactionally. We don't store any data on our system about the client. So if your CRM system, say HubSpot, 
All that information is pulled in real time from HubSpot and stored there. So it's an incredibly compliant system that doesn't store anything at rest whatsoever. So we're taking, you know, compliance, you know, very, very seriously, even if some, you know, Department of Defense or uh, that kind of organization came to us, we can actually execute with hash codes in ways where we're not even aware of the identity of the, the individual, but are able to access systems and, and act like a, a human worker to solve problems. My All hunch right. would be that uh, you would need your agent to identify itself as an AI person at the beginning. Yeah, we can, of course, do any kind of introduction. And it does already, if you ask about it, it does say I'm an AI agent. Thank you. Amazing. I think we're out of time. But um, Igor Kingsley, Marin, if you could put your questions in the Q&A, really much appreciate it. And so Immerse, um, how are you doing? Shall we try again? Yes, good to go. Mm -hmm. All right, amazing. So you have three minutes. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Arthur Weitzman. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Immerse. I'm also a serial entrepreneur with three successful exits. And I'm excited today to share my next venture with you. Immerse was born from a vision to revolutionize the online customer experience. Our mission is to transform how merchants interact with their customers using innovative technologies. And our goal is to become the go-to platform for unparalleled customer interactions. 78% of customers give up on transaction due to a negative customer experience. Online stores convert web traffic to sales at a meager 1%, while a physical store of the same brand converts it at about 25%. This is a huge gap in the problem we're solving. There's a missed opportunity here for merchants to elevate their customer experience, drive loyalty, and revenue. The Immerse single door solution is a game changer. We connect customers to the right agents quickly and efficiently, eliminating typical frustrations. We drive massive KPIs that are important to brands, such as conversion rates, average order values, and customer satisfaction. We have tangible proof that providing great service translates to great business. Our platform excels in versatility and smooth sailing. It's like having a Zoom call fully integrated with order history, CRM, product catalog, and the shopping cart. We can accommodate any customer need through a single portal. This innovative approach dramatically enhances the online shopping experience, increases customer engagement, loyalty, and lifetime value. Here's a snapshot of where we are. Uh, we've eclipsed 20K MRR with a 300% growth in the last few months. We have a low customer churn and the customers we have enjoy 12X ROI on what they spend with Immerse. We have a 78K MRR in our pipeline and position for success. As of last week, we're actually presented with an opportunity to acquire about a hundred customers that are from an existing um, competitor of ours who is shutting down this line of business. So an opportunity is there. Our team is consists of uh, three people in the in the startup team in the leadership team that have experience that eleven have eleven sorry that have eleven startups with three successful exits, and we have a dedicated development team who is very talented and doing a great job building our tech. Uh, today we're raising um, seed round. No, no, no. Okay. Yes. Well, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> that's careful. <laughs> careful. Uh, and uh, um, the goal is to get uh, this money will be used to expand our reach, uh, grow our client base, and more importantly, this round is basically uh, is going to take us to uh, next stage, which which would be Series A. I'm ready for your questions. Amazing. So, yeah, let's open the floor to questions. So, judges, uh, feel free to raise your hands. Judges are uh, thinking very hard. So, let's start with this. Yeah, yeah. If you, oh yes, please go ahead. Sorry, uh, who is it? Who is your ideal customer? Would it be a business or would it be a direct consumer? We sell directly to businesses, brands, and retailers. Our primary goal is direct to consumer. 
Our focus right now is on a mid-range mid -range companies, even though we can, we can service both SMB and enterprise world. But our go-to-market strategy is mid-range mid mid companies that sell directly to consumer. We're a SaaS business model. Uh, we have two products. Our average ticket is about $2,400 a month. And uh, these uh, ticket value depends on the features that you offer. To these we have we have two products. One is uh, digital clientele, uh, as I mentioned before. The other one is QVC style live live shopping. Uh, so it depends on what clients purchase from us that would make up that ticket. Okay, Marin, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Also, thanks a lot. So I was wondering, how long will this last? As long as there is a human-to-human -human connection between the buyer and the seller, we're there to facilitate that engine. I know AI is driving a lot of this, but human-to-human -human connection is still important. And you can today, you know, the reason companies convert at 1% just because there's a lack of that connection in online experience. Yeah, um, thank you. I have, I have a follow-up question on what Dr. Maran said. Yes, uh, with the, you know, with the current uh, infrastructure and, and the kind of bandwidth the user has, do you think they would be able to uh, have all of these features like Zoom call in there, you know, with the clean, with a good UX? Uh, what are the what are the UX uh, challenges that you have faced up till now in facilitating the Zoom calls at the time of checkout and and uh... so we we are fully integrated with uh, top five um, e-commerce platforms, which enables us to really create that seamless experience of Zoom like like what we're having right now. In addition to being able to look up orders, uh, uh, actually you know, pull up the catalog for the client, review the item, use the camera to actually zoom in on, on the item, discuss it, and take the customer all the way to checkout. Okay. Okay, I believe we have time for one more question, if anyone would like to ask. I think, Marin, uh, did you have a follow-up question too? Yeah, actually, I do have one in my mind. So also, I was wondering, if you had passion and determination. If we, if we have what? I'm sorry. Uh, do you have passion and determination? Passion and determination. Um, just to touch about me, I came to this country, came to US at the age of 18, didn't speak any English, um, uh, built my way. Uh, my In two years, I was employed by EY Consulting, spent five years um, building technologies for various businesses. And I've started six companies personally after that, after I left consulting world. Determination is really in my DNA. Thanks for your answer. That's been a tough one, actually. Hmm. Okay, sure. amazing. Uh, Leon, can you put your question in the Q&A? Yeah, so and... my question, Arthur, it's very interesting. Why, I, uh, why are you raising money? You, you did six exits, your team have six has six exits why you wanna to do, do some delusion of your ownership so what 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 actually are you looking for definitely not money so i've personally invested over two million dollars to build this uh, out of my pocket with my own exit money as as you mentioned uh the reason we're raising money is twofold one is we want to expand our reach um basically open doors into clients and the other one is is market acquisition and continue building the product where we've built already in addition to what we've built already our product is fully functional but as a SaaS platform you never start building for example ai component is what we're working on right now to identify the client as quickly as possible and to make that experience as as, as well positioned as possible for the consumer so it'll, it's twofold it's continue building what we've built and to expand our market reach and who is your ideal investor in this case? Our ideal investor would be somebody who who understands retail technology, has invested in direct-to-consumer uh, products and companies, 
um, and understands e-commerce ecosystem very well. Thank you. All right. Good. You're welcome. Uh, so that's time. All right. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, judges, I'm going to share once again my screen showing how the voting looks like. And uh, please take a look at your email that I've sent you. There was a Zoom link that you joined with. There's a voting link. So please click on the link. Um, and you're going to ring the startups. As a reminder, either investment potential or potential to become a unicorn based on your experience. And I'm going to give you two minutes to finish the voting. And then uh, we're going to proceed to for me to show the results. All right, I see everyone has found their links. Now, give me just a second to share my screen in terms of broadcasting the results. And I'll tell you the moment I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, one second. And let me share my screen. Now, before I showcase the voting results, um, I'd like to just extend two invitations. Um, judges who are, as mentioned, in Silicon Valley, it's very likely that our next in-person event is going to be on January 16th. Um, I'm going to send you invites if you see that you're in the US. And um, the winner of this battle will actually proceed to present at this event. Hence, I hope that the winners, uh, the number one place is going to be people who are in the US. Um, otherwise, we're going to let you know it's uh, um, ASAP so you know when to fly in. And besides that, again, if the startups um, or judges are in the US, we're also going to have a little uh, dinner created and orchestrated by our partner on December um, 19th in um, San Francisco in Moscona Center. So if you'd like to just hang out and meet a couple of startups, no pressure for uh, listening to pitches, just chilling, networking in a fancy place, then feel free to join us. Now, just allow me to share. We've just updated our page, so it's a bit um, tricky. Okay, that's not that. One second. Uh, tech support, please uh, help me out to share the screen. Uh, apologies. Um, this is was just, just reloaded, so we have trouble. I usually use uh, the next step of um, Unicorn events. So one sec. Julian, can I please have your assistance? <laughs> Julian is texting. We're having a small, small uh, tech issue. So how about this, um, Gary, if you'd like to lead the discussion to just uh, talk a bit while we haven't announced the winner, what was the judges thinking in terms of how they were voting and what startups they yeah, yeah, liked no the problem. most? I'll buy you some time, no problem. <laughs> now it's good good so going down through so what did you think about the startups so how did how did it feel today mark how was it for you oh so this mark was interesting thank you yeah so it's an interesting spectrum of companies you brought 
Um, I think uh, learned a lit, learned a bit, and um, I'm also quite impressed about the questions uh, from my fellow panelists. So it was nice to hear, especially like for example, ego. I think really going down to the details, and uh, I've learned a lot out of that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, Jason. How was it for you? Yeah, it was good. I thought the presentations are very well organized. You could tell they were ready to present, and you know, all had very different solutions. And yeah, I thought it was a good job. Some of the better presentations I've seen in a while. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that, Peter. How was it for you? Yeah, I was uh, really excited about a few of these companies. Great to see. Um, you know, real world applications of AI uh, gaining traction. Um, yeah, I think the initial traction from the group was uh, really great. I mean, the one thing we're doing at GSD, we're looking around the world and we're looking for some of the best companies that we can find. And, you know, the we've, you know, over the last five and a half years, we've gone down through and, and uh, built quite an online presence. And so a lot of them are being for referral, just like yourselves, right? Some of you have referred the companies to us. So we're all part of the same team and all part of the same network. The one thing we're finding these companies like uh, use me coming in, that's already got $50 million in revenue. These companies are are getting, you know, there's rocket ships, run day, uh, creatives. I mean, they're, they're interesting in their own right, They whether they're early stage or later stage, but it's good to have each one of you here to be able to support it. Um, let's see who else do we have? Uh, Jose, how was it for you? You're on mute. Yeah. Uh, I, I really liked it. You know, that, uh, I'm in tech. So, uh, for a long time, uh, uh, I really liked, uh, two or three, uh, of the presentations here and definitely some, uh, very good high potential. Um, but I, I'm not revealing which ones, so, uh, I just wrote it and you can, you can see that. All right. Sounds great. Hey, Brian, <laughs> how is it for you? You're on mute. Jim, Bob, you're on mute. I accidentally hit uh, one of the buttons. Um, you know, I'd, I'd watched one of your uh, other demo days and uh, or pitch days. And, and this I, I thought was way better than the one that I had watched before. I thought that the presenters were, uh, you know, really they, they had it down in a relatively tight way. They didn't cover everything that you want to hear, uh, but it's impossible to, to really cover everything in three minutes. So I thought they did, did a good job. Yeah, no, that's, it's all up to them. I mean, we got some great yeah. company there, but I appreciate the feedback. Um, Marin, how was it for you? I love your questions, by the way. You hit them sideways. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, dinosaurs are, are special uh, animals, you know, uh, and I'm running a dinosaur. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm a cuckoo clock maker, sixth generation. So no, uh, really nicely curated, good quality, lightheaded. I really liked it a lot. Great, fantastic. Okay, who else do we have there? Uh, 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 Matthew, how was it for you? Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, for me, I'm a later stage investor, right? Coming in, really series B and C is our sweet spot. So in the back of my mind, I'm always wondering, how does this become a billion dollar company? And I felt like the founders really tried to attack that question head on. Of course, in three minutes, they're not going to be able to cover everything we want, just like uh, Brian was alluding to. But I'm I'm excited to see where these startups go. And, and a few in particular, I'm, I'm definitely going to uh, keep on my radar. All right. Sounds great. Joy? Wonderful presentations. It was great to see, especially how AI applications are being used. Thanks. Steve Bruno. Steve-O. Yeah, the thing I appreciated most was just the diversity in the presenters. It makes it a little interesting to go from, uh, you know, different space to different space, understand how different technologies are being applied. So for a common sense guy like me, it was uh, it was quite nice. Thanks, Steve. Kingsley. Thanks, Gary. Uh, you know, we've listened to a lot of uh, uh, presenters. This was really, really, really good ones. Uh, they, they were on time. They were... They were right on point. They know, they knew what they wanted. They knew what what they wanted us to know. Um, personally, I would like them to talk more about the data protection. Uh, in, in future, I will ask them those questions myself when I'm talking to them. I'm definitely looking to to look to to contact three or four of them to uh, explain more to me on how to invest and what they will be uh, willing to offer uh, going forward. Thanks, Kingsley. Appreciate it, brother. I eager Ravenkey. 
How was it for you, Igor? Uh, Tough question. Uh, I loved it all the time. <laughs> Okay, uh, I wasn't very tough today because okay, uh, I'm really well impressed by quality of uh, presentations. Mostly, not hundred percent, but almost every presentation was good. Uh, projects are interesting, and uh, with many of projects as an early stage investor, I would be glad to continue speaking. That's great, and you know, Igor, how much have you deployed? I mean, you've you've got a you've done a lot over the years. Well, how how you know what is it? Where where have you been? Uh, okay, uh, you know, we have uh, six hundred million uh, under management of this, like four hundred fifty deployed, and uh, wow. we have uh, several hundreds uh, of companies, a lot of uh, pre seed, early stage. But from them already, as I told, two decacorns and six unicorns. So we're uh, lo looking forward to make more unicorns. Good. Did you see any today that were interesting without naming the names? Were there any interesting for you today? Today? Okay. Let me let me open. Okay. Ah. Somehow, somehow I cannot switch to list. Okay. Uh, Okay, now I managed. Uh, I only didn't understand really what uh, the hub is doing, even after uh, my questions. Uh, okay. Um, Rande, very interesting. Uh, uh, Tour is nice project. Uh, uh, also, use me. Um, I, I didn't understand exactly digits. I would be interested to know because. Uh, between GMV and net revenue is big difference. So I believe that what we heard it was uh, GMV. Uh, Immerse, uh, I didn't understand exactly. I tried my best and this is why I didn't uh, ask questions because I, I really didn't get uh, through presentation. Uh, Filter also does not, not uh, bad, uh, but um, that's okay. Uh, uh, arbitrage uh, on uh, traffic uh, could be vulnerable uh, due to this uh, company's uh, policy where they want to operate, but uh, maybe not. But I said that. So, okay, my choice, uh, my main choice was uh, Arande uh, Tour and then uh, use me. That's great. Okay. Thanks, Igor. Mm -hmm. I, one thing I, I love is that you always give direct answers. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. and that's a tough question. All right, uh, Victoria, you ready? Uh, yes. Uh, so, judges, if you can just double check that all your votes went through. Um, and meanwhile, if uh, we can have, um, I'm just curious since, you know, um, Igor started being very on point. And this is the question that we love to ask. So what were your favorite startups? If anyone would like to share also their opinion on what were their favorite startups and share justifications, then while other judges are uh, double checking everything, startups usually love to hear some direct feedback and explanation of um, voting before the results are published. Adrian, how was it for you? Who who did you like? You're on mute. You're on mute, Adrian. Sorry. So uh, my uh, my favorite one was uh, uh, use me. Uh, from the revenue point of view, from uh, how the information was uh, very clearly uh, compressed into into three minutes, and um, also uh, on the position uh, two, uh, both uh, Run Day AI and uh, Emers, and uh, the least uh, structure presentation so but 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 of course it's uh, it's all about uh, 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 subjective feedback so uh, i have a word i prefer to be rich than right so maybe if i'm wrong i'm wrong and that's it i assume it 
the least structured presentation was uh, ZHub AI, which uh, I believe is a very good project, but was uh, poorly presented. So um, uh, I believe they, they lost a big opportunity of showing uh, what the project is all about. So uh, I would work a lot on, uh, on their pitch. Um, very good you. quality, very good quality of, uh, of uh, startups. The main, my main thought is which of these companies have the real potential for huge mass adoption? Because with AI now, and when I'm looking at AI projects, I'm remembering the discussions I had with the Gary uh, in uh, 2020 when we did those uh, uh, videos, if you remember. And yeah, yeah. Uh, when I look at any AI project, somehow I have your words popping in my head, you know? Um, so um, uh, definitely you were ahead of, of time in what we are seeing now in the market. We are seeing in AI how it was and still is in blockchain is a new species of companies actually. So it's a little bit like a, a, a jungle uh, where um, only few will really survive, not just survive, will thrive and will become uh, huge, huge companies. And um, um, one of, let's say my concerns is that some companies, not I'm not talking about the uh, the startups here, but remembering your words, which uh, remained in my head, some companies don't need really to use AI, you know? So AI um, also uh, became like an abused word, like uh, blockchain and DeFi became abused words. And there's a marketing person, I, I try to look beyond pitch decks, beyond uh, uh, presentations, because uh, pitch decks and presentations, they are like uh, uh, detergent commercials. They are perfect, right, somehow. And uh, to understand which of the, of the uh, statements and the thesis can really become the next big thing over the the next few years. Uh, sorry for for speaking more about it. Very good quality of uh, of startups, and this is very very important. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thanks, Adrian. All right, Victoria. Yep, uh, judges, please make sure to vote for all the startups, and we're closing the vote in thirty seconds. And once we do, Julia, please uh, share the screen. That would be amazing. Very interesting. I'm seeing that most of the results will likely be um, quite above average. So it looks like um, well, the startups, according to judges, have a really good investment potential. So yeah, I, well, feel like... I think we need a drum roll. That we might need a drum roll. Yes, okay. um, yeah. that's a testament to the quality of GSD Venture Studios, truly. All right, so uh, can you scroll a tiny bit down? So the third place is two financial technologies. Second place is Use Me, and first place is Runday AI. All right. Please welcome the winners and congrats, Runday. Thank you, thank you. If you'd like to say a couple of words. Yeah, I just it's almost every day I run into a situation where it's whether I you know need my dog groomed or need a haircut or something like that where you know I was like, I wish this company had run day so appreciate the support and this is really a very mission based organization to create a world or you know doing commerce is just a text message away. So thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. It's great. Congratulations to all the startups for doing a phenomenal job today. You know we've worked together for fifteen weeks on the project and I've seen some of you, you know, we started uh, trying to figure out where we were and you've come up with incredible ideas. 
you know, and we've taken those companies from a place where we were to, to an incredible journey. And some of the, you know, the judges here today, many of them we've known, I've known for years, many of them are, you know, top tier investors uh, worldwide. But the one thing is you get a, a really good 360 degree view of where you are. And, you know, I'm really proud of each and every one of you. I want to thank all the judges. I'm really appreciate your time. You know, I appreciate each and every one of you. You know, we'll make our little dent in the universe and make the world a better place. We have companies today from Slovenia that have con companies from the U.S., companies from all over the world, Poland. And the one thing we have in common, we want to make this world a little bit better. And if we can use some of these technologies that they have to do it, you know, that's great for all of us. So, you know, hats off to you. Thanks for your time. We really appreciate it.